Well, you know what? Is it all just a little bit too late? Players coming back, a winning performance, 4-1. You know what? It's it's weird, isn't it? You know, we won 4-1 today, yet, I don't know about you, but I don't feel like we won 4-1 today. I don't have that sense of, I don't know, just elation that would normally come after winning 4-1 in a game. You know, you win 4-1, usually you're like, yes, come on, we won 4-1. Let's do this. It's a bit of a, I don't know, for me, it's just a bit like, we won 4-1, but wasn't really a 4-1 game and in fact they played about 70 odd minutes with 10 men and you know it's a difficult one it's a difficult one isn't it well what we're going to talk about today we're going to talk a little bit of yesterday's game obviously we're talking about the Fabio Silva controversy that has got I think two sides to it um you know and we'll look at both sides of the argument and try and obviously make a decision on which side we come down on um we're also going to look a little bit as well at the story that John Lundstrom may now not be going to Travis on Sport, but may be going to the English Premier League uh, to one of the newly promoted teams. Likely to be Leicester, of course, who are in a whole host of financial difficulties. And also, what difference did Ridvan make coming back into this team on Sunday? I thought he made a big difference. We're going to talk about what he will bring, hopefully, hopefully on Sunday, uh, on, sorry, on uh, next weekend when we play that lot from across our city. Not theirs. Right, so let's think about, about yesterday's game. So obviously a 4-1 victory for the boys in blue. Um, a performance that was, I don't know, if you look at that on paper and you look at that score and you think 4-1, my God, that's a good score. That's a good performance. It's a win. But you know what? It doesn't tell the whole story, does it? It does not tell the whole story. And as you can see, obviously, that uh, Wright was sent off after 22 minutes. I think that was a massive turning point in the game. Uh, goals from Fabio Silva at the end of the first half. Derek McInnes disputing why eight minutes was played. Um, well, I think it's uh, a little bit obvious, Derek. The amount of time that VAR took over making decisions was utterly ridiculous. I think it was two and a half minutes for one of those decisions. Absolutely stupid. Uh, ben Davis, who I thought played very well when he came back. Yes, that does have to be caveated by the fact that we did play a team with 10 men in that second half. And Tom Lawrence doing what Tom Lawrence was bought to do, which is take shots from distance and score worldies from distance. A great goal from Tom Lawrence. Uh, John Suter, hopefully that gives him a little bit more confidence in the 93rd minute, rounding it all off. And their goal coming from, well, yes, James Tavernier, who had, I think we can all admit, a pretty stinking performance yesterday. He pretty much stank Ibrox out yesterday. I thought... Um, in terms of the team yesterday, it, it was difficult, wasn't it? You know, it really was difficult. You look at the stats, um, and it was dominant, but it was going to be dominant against 10 men. Um, as I said on the video yesterday, the reaction video, you know, does this game finish 4-1 if Killy have 11 men for the entire 90 minutes or 95 minutes or 100 minutes or however many minutes we did play? It was 99 minutes we played in the end. Um, probably not. Probably not. Do we win it? Probably just about squeeze it. Um it's a difficult one to assess, isn't it? I thought Killy acquitted themselves well enough with 10 men, you know, fair play to Derek McInnes for the changes that he made. Um, uh, but, you know, possession 74% to 26%. That's always going to happen when you play 10 men. Rangers 25 shots uh, to Kilmarnock's six. Uh, no cards for Rangers yesterday, five for Kilmarnock. 16 corners for Rangers yesterday, 16 corners. I think we scored from one, still pretty poor conversion rate, one only for Kilmarnock. 11 fouls by Rangers, nine by Killy. Four offsides for us. Probably most of those were serial Dessers, who I thought was fucking shocking. And our XG was 3.24, so we're a little bit ahead of that. Killy's was 0.77. So again, a little bit ahead of that for them. But yes, we had the chances to more than expand that. I mean, it could, it should have and could have been more than 4-1. It really should have. I thought this man yesterday showed why he is not good enough for Rangers, showed why he is not consistent enough to be a top, top striker. You know, yes, I think he's good enough to be a backup. Yes, I think he's good enough to come off the bench. Yes, I think he could be a uh, striker three or, th or, you know, a third choice striker to come on off, off or, you know, off the bench in the long run. But, you know, he isn't the top man. And today he's proved that, I think, you know, with those misses. I mean, the one where Diamande slides him in down the side and rather than hit it first time and at least work the keeper, he does some sort of random chop back onto onto his left foot, which doesn't come off at all. And obviously thinking he's Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo, not the overrated weird one. Um, 
and doesn't score. So, yeah, for me, again today, proving that he really is not the answer. Um, and just, I thought he was frigging, I thought he was absolutely shocking. Five out of ten at very best today. Um, players that got the pass marks today, players that played well today. I thought that Mohamed Diamande was very good today. I didn't think that was excellent, but very good. I thought he used the ball well. You know, I think we'd see a lot more from Diamande if he didn't have to play alongside John Lundstrom. I think Lundstrom kind of limits what he can do. He, you know, he pulls Diamande deeper. You know, if you look at where Lunny today was picking the ball up a lot of the time, he was dropping back into the back into the back four and picking up level with the centre halves, which slows the. I mean, for me today, John Lundstrom was poor again. He slowed the game down something chronic. He made it pedestrian paced. Um, and for me, we're more effective when Suter brings the ball out from the back or when Balogun brings the ball out from the back, not Lundstrom. Lundstrom just slows the whole game down. He turns it into a, into a, you know, a passive, lack of incisive, just slow ass looking performance by by uh, Rangers. And and it really does worry me going to Parkhead next uh, next week. Uh, but I thought, you know, that Diamande did very well. I thought he picked up the ball well. I thought he used the ball well. Um, I thought Camwell did all right. I thought he was unlucky to be substituted. But, in, you know, in the end, what do I know? Tom Lawrence gets the goal. I thought Sterling was very good. You know, wherever you put young Dujon, that man is a fighter. You know, he is brilliant. And I thought Ben Davis played well when he came on as well for Rangers. Now, look, Fabio Silva gets his goal today, the equalising goal. What do we think about Fabio Silva? It is going to be something that is discussed and discussed <coughs> and discussed. Now, Fabio Silva has done himself absolutely zero favours this season. He genuinely has. Because, you know, you've got the diving. Although I thought he didn't go to ground very often at all today. You know, maybe that uh, conversation that he's had with the manager, you know, finally has sunk home with him. And he's kind of got the message that that is not acceptable to throw yourself to the ground and roll around like you've been shot or kneecapped um, um, on, a, on a bad day in Glasgow. You know, it is not the case, you know, that he... He is obviously a good. He's obviously a good player. He's obviously a skillful player. We can see that, but he doesn't help himself. He really, genuinely does not help himself. Was it a good goal? Yes, it was a very good finish. I mean, the ability to come in first touch, bang it in the corner, keep it down. Ciro Dessas could learn a thing or two from that. Um, but the gesture now, according to some people, some analysts, they say that that gesture was aimed at the fans. Some say that it was aimed at the media. Let's talk about it. So obviously the gesture was this. He went across and then obviously gave it this with the shirt. Now, first things first. Look, if that goal is a goal that wins you a cup final or takes you through in the Europa League or wins a game at Parkhead or wins a game at Ibrox against that lot, then fine. Give it all that. Give it the this. Give it the that. Give it the this. Do whatever you want, you know, because... It is a decisive goal. But when that is a goal to draw you level against Kilmarnock at home, a game you should be winning, it really is not the time to over-celebrate like that. Now, who was that gesture aimed at? Now, Fabio Silva obviously has had a lot of criticism from the fans over recent weeks because of his diving, because of his rolling around. Obviously, that incident where he went down against Alistair Johnson in, 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 in the old firm game at Ibrox, and he's rolling on the ground, banging the ground like he's been kneecapped with a crowbar. Um did not do him any, any favours. Fans didn't like that. And look, we're not Celtic. You know, they are quite happy to accept divers. You know, Celtic love a diver. They love, you know, Kyogo throws himself to the ground all over the place. You know, Kyogo is one of the biggest divers in Scottish football. Rio Hatate, another one who throws himself to the ground at the slightest touch. Celtic players dive. I mean, that is a that is a common fact. I mean, there was once a joke going around about when Celtic players used to have the numbers on, on their shorts. Why do Celtic players have the numbers on, on the back of their shorts? Well, the amount of time they spend rolling around on the ground, it's the only way you can actually see who the player is. That was the joke that was often said down here in England. Um, so Celtic fans love divers. Rangers fans don't love divers. And I think that shows the difference in class between the two clubs. Uh, they're a classless bunch of individuals. We're not. But... Um, Silva, I think today, you know, like I said, was that gesture aimed at the media where he's been getting slagged off by the media for the diving? Or was that aimed at the fans? Who knows? Only he actually knows. I think more than the gesture, more than debating, is it aimed at the media? Is it aimed at the fans? For me, it's just not the appropriate time to do that. It is the wrong time to gesticulate like that. It is the wrong time to celebrate like you've done something 
unbelievably amazing. You've just equalised against Kilmarnock. Wow. Well done. Congratulations. Move it on. Get on with it. That, for me, is the, is what is wrong. And he's done himself no favours there. You know, he has not endeared himself with the fans. I know he's off at the end of the season. I know he doesn't really care. Four games and he's gone. He's, he'll be off back to Wolves. Will Wolves keep him? Probably not. Will he head off on loan probably somewhere again next season? Maybe. Will they try and sell him? Maybe. I don't know. But for me, that was a classless gesture. Something he doesn't need to do. And I think someone needs to, again, have a word with him. Look, I get the argument, drop him, kick him out of the team. But for who? For who? That's the question. You know, we're down to bare bones. No Seema. No Cortez, no Matondo. Unlike to see them again this season. So realistically, what else do we have, guys? That is what leaves. That's it's, it's where we're at at the moment as as a team. So yeah, I do think he was out of order. Yes, I do think he was wrong doing what he was what he did. Okay, so let's talk a little bit of Johnny Lundstrom. Now, like I said earlier, I have given him his pelters. I've given him praise this season. I've seen both sides of John Lundstrom. You know, Lundstrom at times this season four, five, six-week period, has looked an absolutely outstanding player. You know, even in Europe, he's looked brilliant. And then it seems that once the new deal wasn't forthcoming, he's 30, 35 grand a week, whatever it is he wanted, wasn't forthcoming. He kind of dropped off a cliff a little bit with his performances. And for me, look, the one thing that Lundstrom does, which is bad, well, two things, actually. Number one is he slows the pace of the game. You know, he plays those little sideways, backwards passes constantly. I think, you know, the perfect testament to that was right at the start of the game yesterday. Dio gets the ball in a confined space. And what does he do? His first thought is turn forwards, play forwards. You looked at Lundstrom. He got the ball in a confined space. What was his first thought? Turn backwards, pass backwards. And you saw in a, in a, in a, in a microcosm there the difference between the two midfielders. Lundstrom, negative, backward thinking. Dio, progressive, forward thinking. I think Lundstrom restricts Dio. I really does. I think if he had someone like Sterling alongside him, who has a lot more legs, a lot more ability, a lot more talent than Lundstrom, I think he it would it would be a lot more effective. I mean, personally speaking, I would start Sterling and Diamande against Celtic. I just think that it would help us run the midfield. Lundstrom has played in 13 old firms. He's only won two of those. One of those was after extra time. He often hides against them. He often goes into a shell against them. And, and Cal Mack, a lot of the time, will own him. So, look, at the end of the day, for me, Lundstrom's off. That's that's fine. You know, let him go. It's time he went. I realistically wouldn't play him again this season. I would play Sterling in there with Dio, if possible. Use McCausland on the right. Use Silver on the left because there are no other options. Now, all the talk was that John Lundstrom was heading off to um, Trabzon Sport in Turkey. Now, there were reports uh, reported by a number of media sources uh, in the media this morning and yesterday morning that... Uh, John Lundstrom has been linked with newly promoted Ipswich Town. Now, <clears throat> Ipswich Town, all credit to them, have gone through two divisions in two years. Uh, when Kieran McKenna took them over, they were 12th in the in League One. They were promoted from League One and then have been promoted straight uh, from that, straight up to Championship from that. They finished second this season behind the very lucky, cheating Leicester City um, and have got themselves promoted up to the Premier League. I mean, Kieran McKenna has done a fantastic job. Now, one of the things they do need to add is a little bit more experience to their squad, um, a little bit more bulk to their squad. And it is rumoured that John Lundstrom is a player <clears throat> is interesting them. Obviously, the fact that he's a free transfer as well, meaning no transfer fee means that Ipswich can obviously offer him top dollar wages because also the fact that they'll be going up to the Premier League. In the Premier League, it is the land of milk and honey. It is the land of Disney football. It is the land of ridiculous wages for very average players. Uh, now, according to reports in the media, John Lundstrom is set to be offered between thirty-five and forty thousand pounds a week to sign for Ipswich this summer. Now, look, if that's the case, let him get on with it. Let him go. I think it's time he went. Look, yes, he's done some good things for us. The Leipzig goal, for example, that tackle on, on Callum McGregor, all there, you know, good positives. But for me, it's time for McGregor to go. If it's Ipswich, great, fine. Wish him all the best. Um, you know, good luck to him and good luck to Ipswich next season. They're going to need it. Um, I can't see them staying up um, personally. But look, at the end of the day, it's the best, best for the club. And for me, it's time that he moved on. The manager's admitted as much. The manager's kind of admitted that we can't match what he wants. I think, you know, the fact that he wants a three-year deal at the age of 30 to get 30 and 35 grand a week is utterly ludicrous. So if it's what you're prepared to offer him 40 grand a week, 35 grand a week, let him get on with it. Absolutely let them get on with it.
Now, one huge positive from yesterday's game was the return of Rid van Yilmaz. Um, so good to see Rid van back, um, came on, and I thought straight away, effective, positive, attacking, offered real width, offered a change of dynamic on that left-hand side. You know, Borna did okay yesterday. I'm not going to lie. Borna wasn't dreadful yesterday, but he wasn't great yesterday. And I genuinely, please, God, please, Philippe Clement, cannot see Borna Barisic at Parkhead again. He's got too much scar tissue. There's too much damage been done to that man at Parkhead. Do not play him. We've got to start with Rid van Yilmaz. Even if he only gives you 60, 70 minutes, then comes off injured. He's got to be done because, to me, he was a dynamic changer. He was just different class when he came on. He offered width. He offered a genuine left foot presence going forward. He attacked. He got beyond the winger. He overlapped. He put in good crosses. He went round people. He, for me, looked a player. And to say he's been out for a number of weeks injured, to be able to do that straight away was absolutely fantastic. So, look, personally speaking, I really hope that this guy is back and is ready to play on uh, our next weekend against that lot because he is for me, a dynamic change, and he is someone we have missed massively over the last few weeks. He, he is a class player. Yes, his injury history is good, not good. Yes, that goes against him. But overall, talent-wise, he has got the lot. And for me, Ridvan has to start against Celtic. Well, guys, let me know what you think of the stories we've covered in today's video, whether you're picking this up this morning, this afternoon, or this evening. Please obviously smash the like. Please obviously subscribe to the channel. Help the channel to keep on growing. We have got a very, very ambitious target for by the end of the season to hit that 6,000 subs. Buy hearts away. Hopefully on the day we lift the league title. Please God. Um, and, and the offer is there for you. You know, free daily news and opinion videos, free podcasts, free live streams, all free guys. No Patreon, no paywall guys. I don't hide content behind paywalls. If you want to support the channel, super thanks. Donate a bit of cash. Join the channel, whatever you want to do, guys. Look, this is my passion. This is what I want to do, guys. This is, you know, I love, I love doing this. I love talking all things Rangers. Rangers is my club. Rangers was the club I grew up with. You know, you've seen the picture of me as a kid with his Rangers shirt on. Grew up with Graham Sooners, with Terry Herlock, Graham Roberts, Annie McCoy, Robert Fleck, Davy Cooper, Terry Butcher, Gary Stevens, Trevor Stephen. That sort of era, guys. This is, this is just. This is everything to me, guys. Please obviously help support the channel. Next season, we will be putting up together a full schedule for you. Post-game reactions, regular podcasts, live streams, daily views and opinion videos. We're also going to go next season with the fans forum as well, where I will drop the StreamYard link um, and you'll get a chance to actually join on screen. That's next season. We'll be starting the fans forum. So obviously, please obviously look forward to that. So much coming up from the channel. Just help the channel grow. That's all I ask of you. Thank you for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. And on the way out, if you can do me two massive favours. Number one, smash the like. And number two, this is the most important one, guys. This is the one I need you to do every single time for me. Remember something for me. We are the people.